to the Mercedes and Epiphany show. Who the who? <laughs> Are we gonna be able to hear them? Right now, you're the only one that is on. Who? Oh wait, I did something. No, it's important. So I'm not gonna post that. Wait, we can't hear nothing. We don't need to hear nothing yet. But oh, what you about to do? He told me that they had this many minutes. How many? All right, we're all set to begin. If you have a question for Mercedes Russell or Epiphany Prince, go ahead and raise your hand. We'll get to you. We'll go ahead and start with M Adler. M, go ahead and kick us off. Um, just a general question to either. Just wondering what the approach has been in practices of this this week and are coming off a big win. Um, just trying to get ready for playoffs, obviously. Just wondering what that's been like for y'all. Uh, we've had a few good days of practice, just working on the little things offensively, defensively, just getting ready for our game on Sunday. Gotcha. And then, and then again, whoever wants to answer, just wondering, you know, if there were any like matchups in between, like, I know you can't play more work, but either the three other teams that you're either looking forward to playing or just w waiting to see on Thursday just to enjoy the those series. Yeah, I mean, we don't get to pick, so whoever wins will be our opponent. <laughs> okay, thanks. All right, any more questions? Alex, go ahead, Alex. Hey there, Alex Hazzy with NBC Sports. I was curious, um, what are the plans for Thursday in terms of viewing? Like any specific place, like are you watching as a team or how will that work? No, I mean, if people are watching it on their own, they're watching it on their own. We don't have no specific plan or anything. Percy is just joining us. Percy, do you have any questions for our players before we let them go? I'm sorry about that. I do have uh, a quick question. Uh, this is for like Sadie's. Um, it just um, yeah, as you sort of head into the like playoffs, just um, just your thoughts on Damn. the one and done nature of all of this. Uh, obviously, you've been through this before, but just with this particular team, everything they think that you guys have gone through. Do you feel that they, they, you guys are in a good spot? Do you feel that you have to sort of ramp things up, get back to something, or just continue uh, at the pace that you're at? Yeah, I mean, we're in the playoffs, which is always a good spot. Uh, we're excited. We have an opportunity to play in a single elimination. And I mean, we control our fate. We win, we move on, we lose, we go home. So that one game is obviously very, very important. And uh, we, we should be playing our best basketball that day. Uh, do you think that, sort of kind of sort of um, how the team is going now is it are you guys in a confident place or are you sort of you know be, and maybe I'm thinking of this Dewey sort of nature of things just kind of not knowing if she's going to be out there or or not I mean we ended the regular season with the win so obviously we're in good spirits good energy and we're starting to play off so I mean there's nothing more we could be excited about there you go. All right, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We'll have Coach Quinn here in just a moment.
All right, we're here with Coach. We'll go ahead and get started just with a quick statement. Coach, second day of practice back again. And uh, getting ready for the blast. Definitely. Um, these are fun times, you know, preparing for postseason play. Not really knowing who your opponent is, so being strategic about preparation is um, huge. Um, I thought there's good energy. Went a little, went a little bit longer today. Um, make sure our win and our stamina stays consistent. Um, I thought everyone was locked in and had a, a very good day today. All right, great. Thanks, Coach. And if you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand. We'll call on you here as we can. Um, let's go ahead and start with M. M. Mather, go ahead. Coach, um, so I don't know if you saw, but there was a so the publication I work at. The Our Sun Writer compiled a lot of quotes from people um, on uh, Brian January's case for being the best defensive two guard in the game. I was just wondering what your assessment of, um, of sort of her case against maybe Jules for that title might be. Oh, uh, for the best. I think um, Brianne has solidified um, her defensive prowess. I think every year, you know, you see she's always matched up on opponent's best perimeter player. Um, she's very physical. She's very aggressive. Um, I thought I think you, you go back to the days when she was in Indy, you know, they don't win a championship without um, her defensive presence. Um, the thing that I would kind of compare in a way is um jewel has been more of an offensive firepower um and and within the last few seasons um in particular 2020 and this season um she's really honed in on the defensive end um she's i don't like to say a two-way two two-way two players or players who only play defense but i don't think defense was necessarily had to be her thing um it had to be brian january's thing and it is her thing and so you know, I'm always going to roll with the Storm <laughs> player, but understanding Brianna is an excellent um, defender, and I think Jewel is coming into her own. Uh, you got muted at like the last five Sorry about there. that, Coach. Yeah, Sorry. Girl, I didn't want you talking about Brianna anymore. I was, it was, we need to talk more about Jewel. <laughs> okay. There we go. How's that? There we go. <laughs> oh. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry, what's the last thing you heard? Uh, I, uh, I think I said, uh, Bri did you hear me say Brianne is an excellent defender? Just making sure that's out there. Yes. Um, but Jewel has kind of come into her own as an elite defender as well, and I think that that should be highlighted as well, um, being able to be an elite scorer and a defender. Gotcha. And then just wanted to ask with um, – so um, Kate Lewis Hamilton finished the end of the year. Um, all of her, like, shooting percentages from, like, most zones, their highest for, for a few years in the league – obviously trending in the right direction there, especially especially shooting pretty hot as of late. I noticed, it, you know, obviously in addition to that, you, you want the shooting in terms of her like handling, some like elbow jumpers, pick and rolls. Wondering what her ability to shoot more and better recently and also create maybe as like a tertiary option does for your team, especially without Stimmy. Uh, it does a lot for us. Um, you think about the shots that uh, that Lou is able to get, you understand um, the attention that Stewie gets, the attention that uh, Sue and Jewel get. And so when you're able to kind of get shots in rhythm, get open shots, um, that basket um, is a little bit more open and bigger, in my opinion. And it's to me kind of the shots that she works on in practice before and after practice, is, it becomes rep shooting in the game for her because she's getting wide, um, good good looks. And um I will, I, will, I will point to that first and foremost as um, the reason she's just able to, you know, be, be a consistent shooter is the, the preparation that she puts into it. But, yeah, she's very versatile. You saw the other day when she goes behind her back and makes a layup. Um, she could, you know, shoot mid-range. Um, she can get to the rim, and she can also score um, behind the arc. So um, having that versatility, especially within our offensive schemes um, and our offensive flow is a very beneficial for a player like that has that. Um, particular arsenal offensively. Thank you. All right, thanks, Em. Uh, any other questions for Coach here? We'll uh, go Percy. Percy, there you go. Awesome. Hey, Coach, I'm just, just kind of wondering this. Um, uh, you've been with this team for a while, and obviously you're um, uh, the face of it now. Um, if you had to maybe assess 
who is the rival? Who is the Storm's rival? Like who had, like historically has been their rival and like mm. who would be the right? Like I have some ideas, but I just kind of want to maybe hear from you. Uh, for the last few years, I would point to Phoenix, and I don't know if this is this a leading question. Trying <laughs> <laughs> to force me to say Phoenix, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, honestly, I would point to that, and I think you know we play them so much. You know, we play them in the preseason. Uh, you know, before the balance schedule, you would play them three or four times. Um, I always think about 2018 and yeah. you know that that series as well and that rivalry that was created. I think about um, Diana and Sue's friendship and you know that storyline. Um, you know, so that's probably the rival that kind of sticks out in my mind um, as of late, just because we've been in a lot of tough battles with them. You know, uh, if and I was thinking of. Phoenix myself and and really I was thinking of that 2018 series it was uh, really such a good one and if, you know mm -hmm. we could sort of revisit that a bit um anything about that that jumps out in your mind other than that last game other than the, other than Sue's sort of great fourth quarter there anything about that game I mean you can go from the broke yeah I mean there's so much you know so. yeah I mean I was gonna say first and foremost the broken nose yeah. um we you know mass Sue created the t-shirts and I love it <laughs> Um, I remember specifically when she broke her nose, she was fired up. She was like, um, we're going to win this. And this was, I forget, it was a game four. We're going to win this series because the last time I broke my nose, we won a championship. And yeah. as hearing that as her teammate and seeing her fired up about that, my heart just kind of like got full because she knew in that moment what, what, um, that felt like before. And, and she knew she kind of pointed that to you know, compare that to her winning a, another championship before. So it just made me a little bit more, um, you know, prideful, gave me more confidence that she said that in that moment. Um, I think about, cause I, I was, I, I was sitting on the bench, but I think about Diana's shot <laughs> in that game five. Um, I think about how we came out in that series. You know, we, we, we were up big in, in those first couple of games. Um, you know, I think about just how, the, the, our crowd in key arena was rocking um it was loud um the intensity level and then you alluded it to it too i will never forget those shots that sue made um just the guts that it took to take it make it but what it meant for us and how she did it and i mean just an amazing amazing performance you know in some ways it felt like that was the, the finals i mean obviously hindsight mm -hmm. is perfect but i almost want to say in the moment that people kind of felt that too because um washington was a little banged up and you, you know you didn't really know what they had but mm -hmm. Phoenix just just really pushed you guys to the limit they did you know i remember i talked about this with my mom a lot i was there's a point in the game where we're down double digits and i look because she was sitting um kind of courtside and i look over to her with this look like i don't know if we can pull this out and she kind of gives me the thumbs up like you guys got it and then you know that game kind of shifted um but that's that it did it felt like a finals game and yeah you know washington was great that year as well but the way which we i think you know just the perseverance um, going through the battle, being battle tested with Phoenix, I don't think anyone else, whoever we played, uh, was going to get in the way of our championship because we were playing at such a high level and we knew that we got through a formidable opponent and we were so close. The light was at the end of the time. We were right there. And so that's kind of what that, that championship series was. It's kind of like home is around the corner championship is around the corner let's lock in and it was a it was a good three games for us <laughs> yeah it was um if i uh, just said two more from let me hear uh just, just um uh just hearing you try to talk about key arena makes me think of these past three years here that you guys have been mm -hmm. on the road i mean uh and obviously your time in everett is uh, coming to a close just how has that place been for you guys Everett has been amazing. Um, they've welcomed us with open arms. And, you know, our fans have traveled um, and they've been super supportive. And, you know, I have I will miss Everett. Honestly, it's a cool spot. <laughs> if I wasn't, if we weren't playing games there, I maybe wouldn't have visited it. But um, 
I just, uh, you know, think about the opportunity to just play and having, you know, have a gym, have an arena um, that can be our, you know, our our rental, so to speak, you know, and and not our home, not our, you know, not our official spot, but amazing. I, I I'm I'm indebted to them. I I love the fact that you know, though we are a little bit further out, our fans still come and support us. Cool. And just your thoughts on um and. I don't know if you've sort of done the research. I think I've got this right, but uh, yeah, since 2016, um, uh, the number three and four teams in, in their first game, I think they're four and six. So, you know, it's uh, almost a bit of a coin flip there. Just um, if you've taken a look at those games at all or just uh, any sort of common denominator there, or is it just simply that in this league, anybody can beat anybody? Yeah, you know, the other time when Jeff – brought this up I said I don't even want that in my spirit but you know oh, yeah. that, that's reality <laughs> that you have to kind of know um, I haven't taken a look at those games but what I know um, about playing in this league and now coaching it's the teams historically who have um, played consistently um, at a high level throughout the entire season start to finish are the teams that are usually there at the end of seasons and so you know that three and four seed maybe there's some consistency at the end of the season maybe there's some consistency at the beginning in the middle um, and so maybe you know you can't just turn a, a light flip switch on in this league um, and because you know it's too compact of the schedule and so that's what I would kind of point those games to is you know you get a team who's maybe hot um, at the end of the year or maybe on a playoff run or, you know, has gotten together and tightened it up right before playoffs have started and, and they're using that momentum. And maybe there's a team who's kind of been up and down all season and, you know, they get into the game and they are who they are. I don't know who we are right now. <laughs> I'm not trying to say we are either one, but we, we ended the year on a, on a good note and um, we're – you know our morale is high we're playing some good basketball so hopefully we are an anomaly of those things i oh, great and i would be remiss if i didn't ask about uh stewie obviously it's the team <laughs> question uh just um have you seen her is she walking <laughs> <laughs> have you seen her yeah i saw her today <laughs> she's at practice she was not in practice um but again still continuing to do her rehab uh, shout out to stewie just staying locked in with us and you know she's she's here at practice she's in it she's watching um she's doing her exercises and her rehab but um yeah uh, again i will just say you know after that day off thursday kind of just reevaluating her, her friday and see how she's looking awesome Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, Percy. And uh, let's go to Alex. Alex, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Alex Azzi with NBC Sports and on her turf. Um, wanted to follow up on something that you mentioned a minute ago, uh, the moment that you were calling from uh, 2018 of watching Sue from the sidelines. And I'm curious uh, if you don't mind me getting a little bit meta here, like in your coaching philosophy, like how often do you reflect back on moments that like you yourself were in the game and how much is it like times that you're on the sideline watching somebody else? Yeah, I reflect on it often because I think my experiences is, are helpful um, information to relay to the team. Um, you know, I think the one thing I try to to, to shy away from is this comparing hey in 2018 our team was like this you know what I mean because it's totally different but I think when you when when I I think it's valuable to share what I've shared especially when you're um, in a playoff in the midst of trying to win a championship just to share those moments because they are important and today even I alluded to it you know we are at the end of practice we have to kind of push through some fatigue um, that's what playoffs is about who can get a stop, score stop, you know, who can um, push through the fatigue and get a basket, who can get a, you know, a crucial play, a, a passion play, diving on the floor in those moments. That's what playoffs become. And so alluding back to Sue in those moments, that's what she exudes is um, she pushes through uh, those, you know, and that's why she's great because of that mental approach. But to see it as her teammate and now to kind of reflect on it and, and use that exam as, as an example, it's it's super important for the players, especially who haven't been a part of it. Other um, moments that you do you feel like you have a tendency to think about moments that you were watching, like on the bench versus moments that uh, you were on the court as a player? Yeah, I mean, 
I, I'm a little bit old now, so 2018 is probably the most precious, and that's where, where I was at the end of the, my career, and so I was watching a lot, <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I think going through that championship run, it was my visual and my, you know, my mind goes back to me just seeing those moments as opposed to being on the floor. And so, yeah, seeing Sue and going up to her and hugging her after she made those shots, seeing Diana shoot right in front of me as she makes a three, like that's, those are the things I, I saw, but there is very much re realness in feeling those emotions as well that um, whether on the court or off the court, it's still kind of, you know, embedded in you because you went the, through that uh, great time. Got it. Thanks, Coach. No problem. All right. I believe that's it. So we'll go ahead and wrap up. And uh, thanks, Coach. Thank Talk to everybody you. again tomorrow.